Good morning. It is Thursday, May 14th. So we're halfway through May already. Um, throughout this quarantine process, clearly you can see I have not shaved or had a haircut since this started. Anyway, one of the things that I've had a lot of comments on is uh, guys have been very supportive of the, the progress we've been making in the gym. And uh, I will quickly say, there have been a lot of people that have been a lot of help throughout the quarantine to, to get things done and to be helpful. And that this progress simply, regardless of how hard you think I've worked, um, there's just been no way that we would be where we are. Uh, not only with the progress, but just the financial aspect of it. And so these guys have been a tremendous help. And I don't want to single them out right now. Uh, I'll do that at another time. But the entire gym has been extremely supportive and extremely helpful. And I've seen that all over the United States. People are paying their dues, even though they can't go. You know, people have lost their jobs and, and you got gyms supporting people. You know, it's a really cool thing to see in such a weird, you know, <clears throat> For our generation, clearly, and the generation before mine and, and the couple after, you know, this is unprecedented for us. You know, the last time we saw a real pandemic where people had to be quarantined, you know, was 102 years ago. So there's a lot of things that are on the fly, and there's a, a lot of theories out there, and I'm not going to be part of all that. I think across the board with what we do know, things are bad enough. So... What I'm going to focus on is what a lot of people have talked about is not only the progress on the gym and the lifting. Uh, where we live in Tennessee, gyms are able to be open and people are coming to train. <clears throat> what the question has been is people asking and inquiring about the dogs. So I'm going to give be as brief as I can. I'm already two minutes and I've, I've made videos that have been too long, so I'm going to try to shorten this. I would be remiss if I did not mention two dogs prior. One is Maddie Jane, which was actually Wes's dog. Uh, she was a Great Dane that was a rescue. Not, again, not sure how old she was when we got her. She was young. Uh, and then Maudie, which was Melissa's dog, that was a uh, lab mix. And uh, Maddie abruptly passed away. It was one of those situations where that night she was fed, she was fine. The next morning she was not and made it about another 24 hours. But a wonderful dog, super sweet. And, uh, you know, so in remembrance to her, and then obviously Maudie, I would call for Maudie, 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 and she would come and she would go just about to where she's gonna give me a kiss and then would do a 180 so I'd scratch her butt. And uh, she got to come and visit with us one time and uh, unfortunately had to be put down. But in remembrance of them, and then especially Sierra. Uh, Sierra was Melissa's dog that uh, she adopted after Maudie passed away. And Sierra uh, was a very abused dog, uh, physically, mentally, and spiritually. She was so malnourished that not only could you see her ribs, you could see her hips. Obviously, they said she was two years old uh, when Melissa adopted her. I'm not so sure I believe that. I think she was older. But through a lot of time and effort, uh, Sierra, who you saw in Jennifer's uh, Road to the Arnold uh, via Rogue, she makes an appearance. And you've seen Sierra, who is the German Shepherd, in several videos. Loved being down in the gym. Got to the point... She used to have really terrible separation anxiety with Melissa, but then got when she, when Melissa and I combined households, Sierra quickly adapted, had to have different surgeries to get right, and uh, we had to have her on puppy food the rest of her life just to keep weight on her. And so the, the abuse had been severe, but she learned to play, she learned to be happy, she learned to communicate, and she would even seek people out for attention. And uh, she got to the point where she'd love to be down in the gym and she would stay down even after Melissa left for work. And if she got tired of the lifting, she would go upstairs. Um, when she got to the point 
that she could she would just no longer eat and couldn't walk and the decision was made on her behalf and she passed away uh, that all has happened in this pandemic the sequence for Mount Juliet where I live and Melissa lives we faced the tornado the week before the Arnold go to the Arnold we survived it we didn't take any damage but we were without power for about five days <clears throat> got power the day be the day before that I left for the Arnold and then you come back and you're starting to see the effects of the beginnings of the pandemic in the midst of that was when Sierra passed away and then uh, two not two weeks ago, we had what they call a derecho. We did take some damage, and we were without power for about uh, 36 hours, but we didn't have cable and internet for about four or five days. So it's the last two and a half months, at, to say the least, as I'm about to go into furlough, it looks like July 1, it has been very trying, and I share that with you to let you know you're not alone and to let everybody know we're not special everybody is facing this and it's a very challenging time <clears throat> what I did want to do is quickly share the story uh, I would have to have Melissa tell the story of Bella who is the Aussie border mix but I she was rescued she was found on a ranch and was left roaming on her own but Melissa needs to tell that story Abby came to me, um, Abby is now over 13 years old, has about a two day old puppy. She was so newborn, not only were her eyes still closed, but her ears were still laid open. She had to be bottle fed and trained and all those things and has been nothing but an amazing dog. Well, a great friend of mine, Lynn Odom, adopted her and it just didn't work out with a uh, with her other dogs, especially Trace Janelle, who rest in peace, God rest her, her sweet soul, is no longer with us. But um, it was Lynn that named her Abby, and I added on the Gale, you know, so we called her Abby Gale, uh, two separate, A-B-B-I, then G-A-I-L. So, uh, but Abby has just been a tremendous, not animal, she's been part of the family, uh, you know, just a great source of company and, and, and my best little buddy. And uh, throughout all this, you know, she has been amazing and is loving and is, seeks out affect, affection and um, just been great. The other dog, 2G, is the little, uh, we're not sure, looks like a little bit of Jack Russell. She is certainly a mongrel. And the great story about her is uh, my mentor was Bob Schaefer, and you'd have to do a little bit of Google searching, but I learned a tremendous amount, and that's putting it very lightly, and Bob had a very, uh, just a tremendous effect on my life. And uh, he was elderly even when we met, and uh, he was always worried what would happen to him, or well, not what would happen to him, what would happen to his dog should something happen to him. I made a promise to him, should something happen, um, unfortunately, about four years ago, Bob abruptly passed away, and it, it took about two weeks, but uh, T.J. Ball and his family, Missy, and kids brought her down while Melissa and I were competing at Relentless, and Tuji has been with us since, and as, as you can see, has become just this amazingly spoiled but sweet, energetic dog, and uh, so we have the three now. Since Sierra is no longer with us, it's Abby, we think Bella as far as age, and then Tucci. So that is the story of our dogs, and in remembrance of Sierra Grace, of uh, Maudie, and Maddie Jane. And there have been a lot of other great dogs that are so many to mention, but for you dog lovers, that's our story.